Hi, my name is Yulon Lin, and I'm a developer advocate for Data Studio. Data Studio community visualizations allow you to create custom components that integrate seamlessly with your Data Studio dashboards. In this video, we're going to talk about how the visualization config maps to the message containing information that Data Studio sends to the component. A quick note on vocabulary. In this video, I'll refer to the overall package of information that Data Studio provides a community visualization as a message. So the config and the message are related because the configuration is the contract that defines how much the report editor can configure things, whether it's in the data or what style options are available or whether or not the visualization can act as a chart filter. So the config then determines the structure of the message provided and the report editor's selections determine the content of the message. In other words, the message is the structure dictated by the configuration plus the report editor's selections that fill in that structure. And this is really important because consistency of structure allows a single visualization to work across multiple data sets. Let's take a look at each of the keys in the message that Data Studio sends and map it to the keys in the config file. So for each of these slides, part of the config will be on the left and the corresponding part of the message will be on the right side. For clarity and space, there's a bunch of places where I've truncated objects and lists. So ellipses and empty objects and empty lists are often stand-ins for there's information, but I wanted to make it easier to follow. Let's jump in by looking at the parts of the message associated with the data config. First, the fields property. So fields is an object where each key corresponds to the ID of a data element. Each data element ID is associated with a list of fields, whether there are none, one, or multiple fields associated with each data element. So for example, here I have a data element in the config whose ID is source ID, and so it'll show up in fields with a source ID key, and those will correspond to the fields that the report editor has selected in the property panel. Next, the tables object. So this is generally the core of information to be visualized. The library supports two different data formats, and I'm only going to talk about the default data table here. So in the table format, headers is a flattened list of field objects, and the rows are a row of rows corresponding to the data. So imagine a table of your data. The header field objects here have an extra config ID field to preserve the relationship between data element and data, because both in headers and in rows, things have been flattened, so you can no longer directly associate them with the config ID they came from. In the object format, there is no heading. Each row is an object, and each row object contains keys that map to the data element keys with an array of the values in that row that correspond to the information in that data element, similar in structure to how fields is structured. Let's look at style now. In the style object, each key corresponds to the ID of a style element. Each style element ID is associated with the report editor selected value, and if present, the default value for that particular style element. Again, the style selections have no bearing on the organization of the style part of the message. So in interactions, the key, if present, corresponds to the ID of the interaction element. So here, the interaction element has an ID of on click, and that's going to be a property of the message interaction section. And that information corresponds to whether or not the chart is configured as a chart filter and whether or not it is currently acting as a filter. So just to summarize, in this video, we've talked about how the config maps to the message. And you see how the data config maps to fields and tables, the style config maps to style, and the interactions config maps to interactions. The IDs for data elements, style elements, and interaction elements are all really important to keep track of because that's how you'll access relevant parts of the message from Data Studio to use in your visualization. To learn more about community visualizations, visit developers.google.com slash data studio slash visualization and connect with us on social media using the hashtag data studio devs.